Should Archons be the strongest representation of their respective elements? At some point, each of the Archons did have their moments of being the most powerful of their elements, and I think for three out of four of them, it's still true. Okay, it's maybe debatable for another one of them, but I'll get into that one a little bit later. It goes without saying that you don't need to be the strongest at every single role at once to be considered the strongest character. After all, Kazuha doesn't need to do more animo damage than Shao to be considered a better character. I imagine a lot of you lore fiends out there, you really want the Archons to be stronger than everyone else, because why shouldn't they be? They're gods. Why would it make any sense for when we finally get to the land of Pyro, for the Pyro Archon to be weaker than little old Benny boy, the terminally unlucky teenage boy who just has a vision. But it's also equally hard to imagine a world where Bennett's support capabilities are just absolutely destroyed by the Pyro Archon. And you could really say the same for a DPS unit like Hu Tao. Archons that are released nowadays have way more characters to compete with than the early Archons did. So while they may have been very strong at the release, newer ones will have a harder time surpassing existing characters. So let's take a look at each Archon at the release and a little bit after and see how they held up. When Venti was released, he only had three units for competition. Jean is a little bit of a jack of all trades with CC, healing, DPS, but that's the problem. Back then, the big draw to Animo was the CC and Jean's C1, it just does not cut it. If you're unironically using Jean for her CC capabilities, I sincerely hope that you have better days ahead of you. Yeah, you, you could throw them up in the air, make them take some fall damage, that's a fun little gimmick, but its its usefulness is really low. It's really only when you're so undergeared that falling damage can actually out DPS you. Moving on to Sucrose. Now, for those of you who know the history of the game and what the game was like at 1.0, whether or not you played it or maybe you watch videos of people talking about it, you probably know that people's opinions of characters were really, really bad. Bennett was considered F, a lot of people put Chi Chi in S tier, and Sucrose was very underestimated. Many people didn't put too much value or didn't even notice the damage increase in capabilities that Sucrose had. What really mattered was their CC capabilities, because back in 1.0, pretty much every enemy in the game except for Ruin Guard could be sucked in by Venti's Tornado. On top of that, for 1.0 standards, Venti was actually doing pretty respectable personal damage. A lot of people were building him for actual raw damage because Swirl hadn't been buffed yet. So you have this character that has unrivaled CC capabilities and pretty decent personal damage, as well as having an ability that can be used in overworld exploration to quite a good effect. I, I mean, I could talk about Traveler, but do I really need to defend why an Archon is better than the Traveler? Venti was definitely one of the best animo characters in the game up until Cosmo's release. Some might have tried to make a case for Sucro, saying that she can provide more damage than Venti can, and in situations where his CC isn't that valuable, Sucro's absolutely would have been favored. So does does Venti qualify for being called the strongest animo character on his release? Yes, I do believe so. Eh, for six versions anyway. What about Zhongli? Zhongli is an interesting one because one, he's one of the only characters in Genshin's history to receive a buff during the live version of the game. Those buffs were also pretty significant. They took him from being a pretty underwhelming character in most people's eyes to being one of the most widely used characters even to this day. And at his release, he didn't exactly have much competition. He had Noel, Ning Wong, and GUMC. Noel may be a respectable sleeper damage dealer nowadays, but that's mostly thanks to Husk and the Redhorn Stone Thresher, which at the release of Zhongli didn't exist yet. At this point, Noel was a really below average DPS with very, very bad supportive capabilities. She can't support the best due to her very long cooldown shield with very poor uptime. That can be counteracted with field time, but that's the problem. It takes field time. Ning Wong isn't a support, but she's also not the best DPS either. She can do well enough, but she He's not near on the power level of Zhongli. And GOMC, well, once again, it's it's a traveler. You can't really expect much from them, but GOMC can, you know, they can support, they can give you a crit rate buff, and they can do some modest damage with their rocks. And as far as characters we have now, well, we all know that not many Geo characters have been released since then. Even just comparing him to non-Geo shielders, his shield is still so far above and beyond everybody else. Part of that is thanks to the Geo element. It's just generally good against every element opposed to every other element only being good against themselves. So was Zhongli the best Geo unit? Absolutely. And is he still the best? I think so. Now here's a tough one. Raiden Shogun. On her release, everybody was blown away by how strong she was. She quickly shot up to the best selling unit in the entire game at the time. Those sales are also still high to this day and two of the banners that above her are double banners with her on them. Now Raiden had a lot more competition than the two Archons that came before her. She had seven Electra units to compete with if we count Kujo Sara who 
released alongside her. I'm not going to go over all seven because that's too time consuming, but I'll say this. Raiden did something the other two Archons didn't really do. Actual, meaningful damage, and quite a f load of it. Whether you got those powerful early constellations or not, Raiden is going to do a considerable amount of damage. And even if you ignore those, she still has immense supportive capabilities with applying some of the easiest, actually not some of the, literally the easiest off-field Electro you can ask for, on top of being a very potent energy battery. And while she may not have exactly stepped on the toes of supportive units such as Fischl and Beto, she did dominate the Electro category up until Dendro's release. And even after Dendro was released, Raiden still proved to be a very strong unit. When you have an ability that can apply Electro off-field just for applying damage with literally any ability, of course she's going to get some use. After all, that's all Hyper Bloom wants you to do, and while many people may consider it blasphemous to build your Raiden Shogun with nothing but Elemental Mastery and use her as a skill bot, it doesn't make it any less valid to actually use it as a playstyle. Raiden absolutely carried the Electro Element before Dendro ever hit the scene. Even after Dendro, she still proved to be a very strong unit in literally any role you put her in, and while many people may prefer a unit like Kuki for her ability to apply easy off-field Electro on top of heal, it doesn't make Raiden any less of a good choice. She just may not always fit into every team that Kuki does because Kuki is sometimes filling that vital healing role that Raiden just cannot. But the thing is, is Raiden can always go back to just whacking things with her ridiculous burst damage. Even if you don't have the C2, it's still going to hit pretty damn hard. One thing we can say for certain is that Raiden was definitely the strongest Electro unit on her release. She passes that check. But nowadays, I don't think anyone would ever give you a weird look if you came into a conversation of who is the best modern Electro unit and you brought Raiden Shogun to the table. Some people might try to jump down your throat and say that she fell off or she's not as good as she once was and those two statements could probably be considered true and even though it may not necessarily be my opinion I still think Raiden could be considered the best Electro unit. Now let's let's move on to probably the most controversial one Nahida. Nahida actually gets a lot of heat and negative attention for just how strong she is. Many out there even believe that Nahida's mere existence actually invalidates and hurts the viability of other Dendro supports that we had. Kole and Dendro main character were both very popular until Nahida hit the scene. This leaves some people out there with the belief that making Nahida as strong as she is was actually a mistake. I mean, after all, she's flexible, she's relatively cheap to build, all things considered, and she works in basically every single team where Dendro is desired. On top of that, she also got the Raiden treatment with having an excellent C2. However, unlike Raiden, she's not also an amazing DPS, so she at least has that one limitation and a unit like Alhatham still has room to shine within Dendro. As for Nahida's release, well, she beat Alhatham to the punch, so she was definitely the strongest Dendro unit on release. By far. Nobody's gonna contest that one. That's actually not true. There's going to be a Kole mega fan in the comments writing like a 6,000 word essay on why Kole is better than all the other Dendro units. Even in a post Alhatham world, I think it's still reasonable to say that Nahida is a better unit. After all, in Genshin Impact, supports reign supreme. The DPS, they are nothing but the overpowered supports that, well, support them. Which brings us to the Archon that we don't yet have, the Hydro Archon. We're going there very, very soon with Fontaine, which is why I think this conversation or topic is so interesting right now more than ever. When we went into Inazuma, Electra was arguably in a very miserable state overall, so it wasn't hard for Raiden to come in and be the best. When Zhongli released, Gia was in a really bad state, and if, uh, if you removed Zhongli from the picture, uh, it probably would still be in a bad state. Venti released with little competition, but Sucrose was a powerful contender, but when it comes to CC, Venti is just king. But here's the thing about the Hydro Archon. The Hydro element right now is so goddamn stacked that I really have a hard time imagining that the same thing that happened for the four previous Archons is going to happen to the Hydro element. I mean, like, how goddamn overpowered would the Hydro Archon have to be to make units like Xingqiu and Yelan look bad in comparison? These are both supports that absolutely dominate in both Hydro application and actual damage. While Yelan may eclipse Xingqiu's damage, that doesn't make Xingqiu's damage any less significant. He does a lot of damage for a support. If we want to factor in constellations, Yelan is even the closest thing we have to a Bennett for HP users, with their C4 giving everyone basically another HP artifact. We even have very good Hydro DPS with Ayato and Child. And yes, child haters, you need to suck it up. Child's a good character. You're just not good at Child. Now, to end up being a DPS that ends up being better than Child or Ayato is a lot less ridiculous and more reasonable to believe than ending up being a better support than Yolan and Xingqiu. I just think it unlikely because Archons typically have supportive kits, even if that supportive kit can absolutely kick ass like Raiden Shogun can. The question is, though, is it healthy for the game if we get a Hydro Archon who is a support that is better than supports we have like Xingqiu and Yolan?
Pokemon because they are so strong. We're talking about like top 10 units for an element that has been established. When Nahida came in and became as strong as Dendro, it was hardly a surprise. We had barely any units at the time and it's a brand new element. You got to make things exciting to actually sell the element to people. But Hydro is a very known quantity. On top of that, it's part of what is making Dendro so strong. Even before Dendro ever hit the scene, Hydro was part of Vaporize, which was widely considered to be some of the best teams we had. Which is one of the reasons why when I think should an Archon be stronger than regular characters of the element, Hydro and Pyro were two that always stood out. And now that we're rapidly approaching the Hydro Archon, we're finally going to see what that looks like. I was already pretty impressed with how they handled Dendro. I was always wondering, you know, if Dendro comes out and it buffs Electro and it makes Electro super strong, well, like if it makes Kaching that much better, then how much stronger is Raiden going to be? But they managed to make a creative solution that didn't make Raiden more powerful, but helped all the other units. So I just gotta wonder, is it even possible to do that with Hydro? Is it possible to make a Hydro Archon support that is considered the best unit in the game, but somehow isn't also stepping on the toes of units like Xingqiu and Yulan? I mentioned that Yulan C4 is basically the only version of like Bennett or Goro for HP units. We don't have many units that can party-wide buff HP scalers. So is it possible that the Hydro Archon, given how Hydro has an affinity for being HP scaling or having some kind of HP element, is it possible that she is going to be the Goro or Bennett for HP? HP. And if so, is that making her a little too niche? Is that really going to just make her less exciting as an Archon release? Given that if you don't use any HP scaling characters predominantly, like, you're probably just not going to want her. I would love to know your guys' opinions on this. Do you believe that Archons should always be stronger than regular people? Or, you know, at least for a little bit like Venti was? Or do you think for the sake of game balance that they just shouldn't worry about it for these later Archons because there's so many units to contend with that if you try to go too crazy with it, it might be a little power creepy. You might end up with a Raiden situation where people just feel like they're being baited into buying a really overpowered character. Regardless, I am extremely excited for the Hydro Archon. I can't wait to see her kit. Archons are always an exciting time, and the Hydro Archon is probably my most anticipated one. I'm really hoping that she does end up being the ultimate HP scaler or the ultimate HP scaling buff character. Just something to do with HP. I mean, that's what the whole element has been going towards, right? So, you know, why not go all in? So thank you to my members and my patrons. Thank you to you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Attaboy! Uh